Honourable Senators, His Excellency the Governor General approaches the Senate Chamber. Honourable Senators, please be seated. <coughs> Honourable Senators, I am present for the administration of the oath or affirmation of allegiance to Senators elected to serve in the Senate from 1st July 1996, as required by Section 42 of the Constitution. Certificates of election of senators elected to serve in the Senate from 1 July 1996. I inform the Senate that on 12 July 1996, the Governor General received a letter from Senator Jeannie Ferris resigning her place as a senator for the State of South Australia. Pursuant to the provisions of Section 21 of the Constitution, the Governor General notified the Governor of South Australia of the vacancy and the representation of that state caused by the resignation. The Governor General has now received from the Governor of South Australia the certificate of the choice by the Houses of the South Australian Parliament of Senator Jeannie Ferris to fill the vacancy caused by the resignation. I lay those documents on the table. <laughs> Will honourable senators please come to the Will honourable senators please come to the table? as their names are called by the clerk, to make and subscribe the oath or affirmation of allegiance. Will the following senators representing the states of New South Wales and Queensland please come to the table? For New South Wales, Robert Leslie Woods, Suzanne Margaret West, David Gordon Cadell Brownhill, Bruce Kenneth Childs, Helen Lloyd Coonan, Vicky Worrell Bourne, and for Queensland, Ian Douglas MacDonald, John Joseph Hogg, Ronald Leslie Doyle Boswell, John Joseph Heron, Brenda Gibbs and Cheryl Kernan. Will the senators making the oath take the Bible in their right hand, and will all senators make the oath or affirmation following the form handed to them, including in the oath or affirmation their full names? Will the senators please now sign the test roll and the senators roll.
Will the following senators representing the states of South Australia and Tasmania please come to the table? For South Australia, Robert Murray Hill, Rosemary Ann Crowley, Natasha Jessica Stott de Sloyer, Hedley Grant Pearson Chapman, Christopher Cleland Schott, Jeannie Margaret Ferris, and for Tasmania, Jocelyn Margaret Newman, Susan Mary Mackay, Paul Henry Calvert, Nicholas John Sherry, John Oden Wentworth Watson, and Robert James Brown. Would all senators uh, making the oath please take the Bible in their right hands? And would all senators make the oath or affirmation following the form handed to them, including in the oath or affirmation their full names? Would senators now please sign the test roll and the senators roll? Congratulations. Second time round already.
Will the following senators representing the states of Victoria and Western Australia please come to the table? For Victoria, Richard Kenneth Robert Alston, Robert Francis Ray, Charles Roderick Kemp, Bernard Cornelius Cooley, Cooney, K. Christine Leslie Patterson, Lynette Fay Allison, and for Western Australia, Arthur Winston Crane, James Philip McKeenan, John Horace Panitza, Thomas Mark Bishop, Alan Eggleston, and Andrew James Marshall Murray. Will senators making the oath please take the Bible in their right hand, and would all senators make the oath or affirmation following the form handed to them, including in the oath or affirmation their full names? Will senators now please sign the test roll and the senators roll? Yeah, mate, to you.
Uh, Mr Clark, I remind the Senate that the time has come when it is necessary for the Senate to choose one of its members to be president. And I propose to the Senate for its president, Senator Reid, and I move that Senator Reid do take the chair of this Senate as president. Are there any further nominations? If there are no further nominations in accordance with the standing orders, Senator Reid is elected president and will take the chair. Yeah. Thank you, Senators, for electing me to be your president. I regard this chamber as a very important part of the political process, and I undertake to discharge my duties with integrity and impartiality. Michael Behan retired as Senator on the 30th of June and has just now retired as President of the Senate. And from the time that I was chosen as our candidate for this position, I have been enormously indebted to him for the courtesy and consideration that he has shown to me in giving me every opportunity to learn from him about the job of the president and the things that are done by the presiding officers in the building and in relation to the precincts. We worked together well when he was president and I deputy, and I value the friendship that has developed between us, and I wish him well as he moves on in his career. On a day like this, one reflects a little on the people that have been involved with one getting anywhere in life, and they are very valuable. There was one incident in particular I wish briefly to refer to, and that is the untimely death of John Knight, a good friend of mine and the first senator for the ACT. Some of you will know, some of you will not know, that John Knight, at the age of 37, died in office in March 1981. He left a wife and two young boys, uh, Jason and Joshua. But for that untimely event, there is no possibility that I would ever have taken my place in this chamber and had the opportunity to serve both the ACT and this chamber. And on an occasion like today, one refers to, I think, and thinks about such things. Uh, Madam President, I'm pleased to have the opportunity to be the first to congratulate you on your election, both on a personal behalf and also on part of my, uh, my colleagues. If I might say so, I think the Senate has made an excellent choice. You have, uh, you have served as well as Deputy President and Chairman of Committees 
I think everyone has appreciated the way that you have, you have uh, controlled us in a firm but, uh, but dignified way, and I'm sure that you'll continue to do so in this high office that you now hold. And I was thinking a moment ago of the, the qualities that one would look for in a president, and um, not necessarily in this order, but possibly I thought the first would be a good sense of humour. You have that. Secondly, a good solid dose of common sense, and you have plenty of that. Thirdly, legal skills or the equivalent thereof. You're well qualified in that, uh, that regard. Uh, and fourthly, obviously, political skills. And you have, uh, you, have, you have been in politics now for a long time and very successfully in every, uh, at every level of your political uh, role. I refer from the, the electorate responsibilities here in the ACT up to the various functions and responsibilities that you've held in this Senate. So I have no doubt, uh, Madam Pr President, that in fact uh, you will even further enhance the standing of this chamber and this parliament by being our president. Uh, I'm a little bit proud that you were a South Australian. You're always welcome back any, any time. Uh, and I'm also, as a Liberal, proud that uh, uh, Liberals have, have, have now in the Senate the first uh, woman Senate uh, president. So I, can, uh, I congratulate you and wish you well. Senator Faulkner. Uh, thank you, Madam uh, President. And on behalf of opposition senators, I certainly uh, wish to congratulate you uh, upon your election as president. I think today is a historic day for the parliament, uh, in particular, of course, uh, for the Senate, with your election as its first woman president. Uh, you've already, of course, made history as the first woman deputy president uh, in this chamber. And we in the Labor Party do congratulate you on what we believe is uh, a groundbreaking achievement uh, in that regard. We're delighted uh, to, uh, to see you in the chair. We acknowledge uh, your election, of course, is in accordance with the uh, principle that the party of government should hold the presidency of the Senate. And I want to say also that I do look forward to working with you uh, with a close working relationship that we established, I think, many years ago, uh, both uh, with uh, WHIP's responsibilities in this chamber. I know that you know your way uh, well around uh, this place. You have a very good uh, knowledge, not only of the formal standing orders and, uh, and uh, procedures of this place, but also the way uh, this, uh, this place works informally. And of course, there is a need for any president really to have a very good understanding of that, because you do preside in a chamber where no one party has a majority. But I'm very confident that uh, you will be treating all sides uh, with fairness, that you will be treating all sides uh, without prejudice, uh, no matter what the circumstances or what the issue that you face. I think uh, at times you are going to find uh, the remainder of the parliament uh, difficult and trying. It inevitably is in politics. I'm very, very confident, as are my colleagues, that you will be equal to that task, as you've proved to be in the other offices that you've held uh, in this place. Uh, I also, of course, acknowledge that not only do you have responsibilities in this chamber, but with the Speaker of the House of Representatives, you have significant administrative responsibilities. And in conjunction with the, the uh, Speaker of the House, we expect you also to fulfil those uh, responsibilities with impartiality and with fairness. Uh, I uh, can assure you on behalf of the opposition that, uh, that uh, Labor senators in this chamber look forward uh, to a productive and cooperative uh, relationship uh, with you. I assure you that uh, as you commence your role as uh, president of the Senate that you have our confidence and on behalf of all members of the opposition I heartily congratulate you on your election. You. Senator Kerno. Madam President, warm congratulations from the Australian Democrats, and what a pleasure it is to be able to use the term Madam President. But being the first woman is not the only reason to congratulate you this afternoon, because the Democrats believe that in all other respects 
you are a strong and deserving candidate for the position of President. I'm particularly moved to remark upon your strong record on human rights issues, which is acknowledged across the ranks of this chamber. Also, your diligent work on the processes within the chamber, ever mindful of the need to protect the reputation and integrity of the Senate, as you did in your role as opposition whip, a role some people thought you uh, left just in time, and as you, in your role as deputy president. I can personally attest to your unfailing courtesy, fairness, and independence. Ten years ago today, on Budget Day 1986, was the day Janine Haynes rose to speak in this chamber as the first woman leader of a political party at the federal level. Ten years ago, the Democrats had five men and two women, but if you look behind us today, it's quite the reverse, five women and two men, and all the leadership positions held by women. So that's, that's, what, uh, that's our contribution. <laughs> They're okay. You have to be strong men in the Democrats, I can tell you. <laughs> but on behalf of all of us, myself, Meg, Vicky, Natasha, John, Lynn and Andrew, we wish you well. We look forward to working with you and we offer our warm congratulations upon your election. Senator Boswell. Uh, Madam President, uh, may I congratulate you on, on behalf of my National Party colleagues and assure you that, uh, uh, that you have our support and uh, our unanimous support and we uh, wish you all the best in what will be a, a difficult three years with the numbers so close. But uh, I'm confident and I'm sure all of us are confident that you will dispense uh, uh, even handedness in your role as president and I know that you'll administer your duties uh, faithfully well and well on behalf of everyone in this, uh, in this chamber. Senator Margaret. Thank you, Madam President. On behalf of the Greens WA, I rise to honour you in your election as the first woman president of this, uh, this House. I uh, hope that your example will encourage more women to be part of the political process. We still have a long way to go in Australia. I also hope that over time the, the language of the Senate and the language of politics will become more geared towards the society we would like it to come. We have uh, every confidence in your abilities. I've had great experience with working with you uh, in, in my last three years that I've been involved with the Senate, and I wish you very well in the future. Thank you. Senator Harradine. Madam uh, President, I should like to join with my colleagues in congratulating you warmly on your election to uh, the President of the Senate, uh, to that position which is a, an onerous position, and become an onerous position, and even perhaps more onerous position in this uh, uh, particular Senate, as uh, the um, debate uh, will go to and fro on various issues of uh, great importance. It, uh, but your background and your experience um, uh, serves you well, I believe, in discharging uh, that onerous task. You'll need to, of course, uphold the um, principle of uh, freedom of speech, uh, not in, well, in this chamber for a start, uh, a fair approach to, the, to that particular principle. Uh, but also freedom of speech, freedom of assembly and freedom of peaceful protest in the precincts of the parliament for which you will be responsible. And uh, I think that is uh, an onerous task, but a very important one to uphold those freedoms. And uh, I'm confident with your political background, uh, with your strength of character uh, and with your legal background, you are well equipped to perform that task. And uh, I am confident also, having worked with you for the last, I think, 15 years, um, and uh, seen you in action, uh, that you will be up to meeting that very onerous task. Congratulations. Thank you. Senator Brown. Madam Chair, it's my first day in the Senate, your first day in the Chair. I hope you are feeling as pleasured as I am at being on such a new, new turf and uh, I wish you great success and happiness and fulfilment in the years ahead in the chair.
Um, I wish to inform honourable senators that the Governor General will be pleased to receive Madam President and such honourable senators as desire to accompany her in the members' hall immediately. Can I just say thank you for your good wishes? And the sitting of this Senate is suspended until the ringing of the bells.